Obviously, that we have to manage much better when you cannot win. And the way we, we handle the ball in three occasions in, in deep areas, it's, um, it's not good enough. And, and then there is half time. You know, you want to win the quarterfinals, you have to beat your opponent. And this is what we have to do at the Emirates now. What do you think you were lacking out there tonight? We lack threat. We lack much more threat, um, more aggression, especially when, when we had the ball in, in the final third, especially in the back as well, more purpose to, um, to hurt them. So we would trick a few things to, um, to attack better, especially because to be fair, we haven't conceded at all, but uh, we can do better. Was that because they made it difficult or do you feel that your players just weren't quite at it? No, it's a team that is very well organised defensively and uh, they break your rhythm all the time. I don't know, it was 35, 37 fouls in the game. So allowing that as well, it's, uh, it's not good enough. And, um, and there are certain things that we will have to do much better. We'll play at home. We know now, we know them and we know what to expect. We've seen how crucial set pieces have been to Arsenal this season in games. Why do you think you weren't able to get a breakthrough with any of those tonight either? Well, first of all, it looked like we couldn't even touch anybody uh, because everything was a free kick. Uh, but as well, we will learn from that, prepare better and uh, go and do it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, one of the reasons that uh, Arsenal weren't able to break through with incredible Porto, that's their sixth straight clean sheet at home. Waiting to talk to us now indeed from Portugal, Martin Keown, who's there at the Dragao. Martin, don't know what that was like there at the end when Porto found that last minute winner. I don't know, did we need to get the celebration police out for that? <laughs> well, um, it was some atmosphere at the end and um, I was just about to say at the end, it was a very professional performance from Arsenal. Didn't really create too much. That's the first time in two years they haven't had a shot on target. Um, and then that sucker punch. And I think with being such a young team, um, I think it's one of those learning processes, a competition of, of late goals and that one will hurt. Uh, and the team now really obviously to re regroup is three weeks away. Um, but there's just no rhythm to Arsenal's play tonight. And I think you have to give Porto great credit for that. They were very compact, uh, 37 fouls, as they've said. The f and, and the best threat really for Arsenal was from corners and set plays, and it didn't really flow for them. So really, um, I just think it's about learning and moving forward and coming back in the next game and using the hurt of that disappointment to, to go one better in the home leg. Mm. Porto's record away in England, not great in European competitions. It's 22 games. They've drawn three of them, lost 19, won none. A draw would be enough for them. How concerned are you about a 1-0 scoreline, taking that back to the Emirates? Well, look, it, it could have been a very good night for Arsenal, and I think now it's just made it a little bit more difficult. So um, I'm still confident there's, there's plenty of action, there's plenty of life left in this tie yet. There's no, don't worry about that. Arsenal are in really good form. 21 goals in the last five games coming into this. So uh, it's there under the bonnet. Just There was just a passiveness about their play tonight, which was really quite surprising, that they didn't build on the momentum that they took into the match. Um, but as I say, you know, I think they'll learn from it. Big game at the weekend, of course, and the, you know, to get back into the Champions League now, next season's a priority, but you're certainly not out of it right now. And so a little bit of a learning to do. I think there's a bit of naivety. Perhaps the goalkeeper maybe um, could have been a little bit further back in the goal, a yard back, and I think he can save that. And Declan Rice, who I don't want to criticise because he was magnificent in the game, maybe a little bit of fatigue, should have perhaps pressed slightly better. Martin, um, set pieces have been mentioned since, uh, you know, since the game finished. 17 goals for Arsenal in the Premier League. They're the, they're the best at set pieces, four in the Premier League. And the three best chances today really were, were from set pieces. How disappointed would you, would you be if you were the Arsenal manager not converting one of those? Michael, I think it was difficult, really, because it seemed to take an age for every corner to come in. And I think the dark arts, they were very clever from set pieces and they couldn't really get near the keeper. Some of the players were being fouled. The referee was blowing his whistle quite a few times. I think he gave five fouls from from corners. So they, it wasn't flowing. And I think that's what um, Arteta was um, alluding to. And I think the press conference will be very interesting before the next leg, because I think he's going to bring this up and it will put tremendous pressure on the referee for the next one and um, yeah set pieces has been they've been prolific but today they just couldn't get the delivery and then in the box itself they, uh, very often they were being fouled so it's interpretation i know that but um, hopefully in the home leg you get those things for you rather than against you mike thank you so much for sticking around to talk to us this evening have a safe journey home look forward to seeing you soon excellent all right martin feels that that shot from Galena was savable. I don't know what your position is on that. Mm. James, what did you think? 
Well, I mean, he's been one of the form players in the Champions League this season. Five goals in six games, four assists as well. So it wasn't really a surprise that he was going to be the guy who made the difference tonight, even though someone like Taremi, who's been so good for them in the Champions League over the last few years, wasn't available. I see Martin's point about could David Raya have taken a step back? I think you also just have to salute the, the finish itself. Porto upped his release clause over January, perhaps on the back of how well he played in the group stages, to 60 million. Yeah, he's not one of their younger talents that they've brought through or they've found early. Signing from Braga, he's 26, so it's, it's not like he's... I mean, you could say he's in his prime rather than something one well, up and coming, but uh, fine finish. What do you make of it? It was a great finish, of course, take nothing away from, from, um, from Galeno. I wasn't going to bring the goalkeeper up, because I thought it would be a little bit harsh to say so. But now you've asked me. <laughs> I did watch it and I did think, oh, you know when the ball goes in and you think, it didn't quite look right. I think, oh, is, keeper, is the keeper at fault? Right. I'm not sure whether taking a step back would have helped. Uh -huh. I think actually shuffling your, shuffling your feet across. Because right. the ball went in so slow, I think you've got time to take one, two strides and then dive. If you look at the goal, it starts curling and he literally, from where he's planted his feet, he then dives and he can't get to it. I think he's got time with a slow floated, floating ball to take one or two uh, steps sideways and then jump. I wouldn't look at it and say, oh, it's a big, big mistake. But, sure. but maybe now you mention it, you think, could he have done better? All right, Ray wouldn't have got to the first big chance that Galeno had back in the... 21st minute, how about that one? Nowhere near, would he? This was, uh, he didn't have to be so precise, did he? I mean, this was an, it was an amazing effort. It was almost like pinball, you had to watch it again to see what happened. Whack! And then it comes right back to him, and he's so alert for that second chance. Maybe he needed just a little bit more composure on the second one. I love the way he just nips in in front there. Um, and then maybe a side foot, maybe a little bit more control on the rebound. But it comes to him so quick. He's so alert. Yeah, I mean, amazing. He's, it's kind of impressive that he's agile enough to connect with it the second time anyway. Yeah, but... yeah. I just think maybe a bit more control. Side foot, you get more control. Um, again, you can't blame him. He, mm. he, was, he was a great effort, but uh, he, he probably deserved a goal at the end of it. He got it in the end. Uh, Arsenal didn't. What happened with the set pieces? Martin talking about dark arts. They didn't get the rub of the green, etc. What was your feeling about what was going on there? Well, I mean, they still got their head onto three... Good chances. Mm. I mean, whether there was pushing, pulling, tugging, whatever, um, they still had three big chances. That's a good one. I mean, that's a really good one. You know, he shrugs off his man. Yes, there's a little bit of con contact in his midriff that might put him off, but I think that's a big chance. And, uh, yeah, there was lots of pulling and pushing, but that's what you get nowadays. And another big yeah. chance there. You know, Averts this time. It's a clear header. There's, there's, there's no dark arts going on there. He should be, he should be nodding. But also, Mike, I mean... We've just talked about Arsenal scoring 17 Premier League goals from set pieces. Mm. Sergio Conceição and his coaching staff will have made that a massive point of their training for this game. So you can understand them trying to not rough them up, but certainly put them off from those set plays. And I think they did it not so good, because as Michael said, they had three really good opportunities there, but well enough to make it frustrating for Arsenal. All right, so uh, let's have a quick look at the fixtures that await Arsenal in the next few weeks, because there are some key games coming up as they battle away on two fronts. The Premier League, of course, which will see them in TNT's late game on Saturday against Newcastle, kick off from 8 o'clock. Then you've got Sheffield United away in the Premier League. Brentford, Porto, the return match there, and then Chelsea, then the international break, and then Man City. Though, well, that last game, of course, gonna, mm -hmm. we, they would hope a big uh, influence on the uh, destination of the title perhaps this season. But how much do you think uh, Arteta, are there any positives that he can take from tonight into the game at the Emirates, the return leg? Yes, I mean, he said himself, we've learned a lot, and they're gonna have to learn a lot in this. This is the first time in the competition for a while, so. Um, so I think they will have learned a lot, and I still make them favourites to go through, and that, mm. those fixtures are not so bad, you know. I'm sure they'll win the next few games or pick up plenty of points anyway, and I think they'll go through in this tie, and then it's the big stuff, isn't it? Then it's Manchester City. That could be the de defining game in their title challenge. If they can get something out of that game, then they've uh, got an exciting end to the season. But obviously that Porto and Man City game look like the crunch ones. They do, don't they? Do you have them going through against Porto after tonight? I just think... 20 years on from this Porto side knocking Arsenal, the Invincibles, out and having that win at Old Trafford with Jose Mourinho going and celebrating in the way that he did, there'll be a lot that will push Porto into that, into that game. And as Michael says, this is a Porto side that is very experienced in this competition. 
They're almost always in it. They almost always get to the round of 16. And you can see that. They're, like a, they're kind of like a mini Atletico in, in, in how they play against. Arteta said, with all those fouls, breaking up the flow, breaking up the rhythm. Mm. And they're a really awkward team to get past. So, you know, all right. I'm not writing them off. OK. Hello and welcome to the Arsenal and the Porto. This game is important and we are here to share the news of the Arsenal against the Porto that uh, so far what we have received in this game against the Porto. So the game is important according to the any, po any point of view. So the lineups that has been so far for the Arsenal against the Porto, uh, I, we have to discuss uh, lineups starting 11, team news for Porto uh, against the Arsenal, Partey Vida trade ahead of the UFA Champions League against the um, Arsenal. So, if we mention and we have a detailed analysis on that, Arsenal travel to Portugal to take on FC Porto for the first leg of their round of 16 tie in the UFA Champions League on February 16. Now, Michael Ratata on the Gunners have struggled at this stage of the competition in recent history. In 2007, the last appearances in this round, they were knocked out for a seventh of this season. They were uh, the last appearance in this round, they were knocked out for a seventh time in a row. But their entire club has significantly changed since and they are one of the favorite to go on and win the tournament despite never doing so previously they win the game. Ortota has had a few injury issues to contend with lately but it has not affected his side to any great degree. They are on a five game winning streak and have uh, they are five game winning streak uh, in the Premier League. The last previous five game they have been played in the Premier League. They have consecutive win in the champ in the Premier League. So this will not affect the uh, Michael Ratana team despite having the injury of four and five Person. They are on a five game winning streak and has scored an impressive of 21 goals in that run. In the previous five games, Gunners scored 25, 21 goals in that era. The Sporting News take a took at the predicted liners for the clash who will be the available to start for the Arsenal and whether some injured players could return or not. So these are the lineups, uh, that the 11 lineups that has been for the Porto against the Arsenal. Now I'm going to uh, announce the 11 lineups of the Arsenal against the Porto. So first of all, the Arsenal 11 lineups are the Atata injury list is largely ahead of the trip to Portugal with the Kiro Tomaishu and Jibrail Jesus not quite ready to return for the visitor and Zenrika Zinchanko also a doubt for with a cloth. Uh, with a cough problem. However, Thomas Partey and Fabio Verira have returned to team training this week and could be in line to feature in this squad against the Porto, although it seems unlikely they will be rushed back. So for the new player, this is uh, hard uh, to come back for the Arsenal against the Porto side, but uh, despite of the injury in this game, they need to win so the Arsenal 11 lineups need to be uh, strong as compared to the Porto side. Arsenal projected starting lineup 4-3-3 right to left Raya, White, Saliba, Jebrail, Kivor. These are the four players that has been in the defense Odegaard, Rice and Jorginho. Three are the midfielders while the Saka Havertz and Martinelli, these are the attackers of the game. Arsenal subs 9. Porto head coach Sergio Canseco was dealt a blow when striker Mehdi Tarimi suffered a high thigh problem at the weekend. Meaning he is doubt Zedi Sensacho is out for the reason, while Ivan Marcano is also set to miss out through a long term ACL injury. Now, Porto projected starting lineup 4 3 3 right to left. Costo, Mario, Pepe, Otavia, Wendel, defenders of the Porto side, Velira, Gonzalez, and Sanchez. These are the midfielders. While the attackers is the con 
Conquiso, Evaluation and Terremili. These three are the attackers of the game from the Porto against the Arsenal. So the Porto subs are 9. Arsenal vs Porto kickoff time uh, according to the USA is 3 p.m. Pakistani standard and local time. Okay. So these are the uh, 11 lineups that um, that need to play against the uh, Arsenal and uh, Porto also have a um, strong lineup against the Arsenal. The entirety of the 2023 and 2024 Champions League knockout stage will be streamed by CBS Sport. The Champions League first leg match in the round of 16 has also been selected for television broadcast on CBS Sports uh, Network, a channel which is available to stream on any football network. Okay, so these are the news for the uh, Arsenal against the Porto. Now, if you look at the game, Arsenal could welcome back Fabio Vera for today's Champions League game trip to Porto, but they remain without Thomas Petri. Vera has been absent since November after undergoing groin surgery, while Party has been out of the action since October due to high thigh injury. Now these are the injuries for the um, for the Arsenal. Both players are back in training now and took part in Arsenal session on Tuesday morning at their base in London Colony. The squad were due to fly out to the Porto on Tuesday afternoon with Verita among the, among the travelling party for the first leg of this Champions League last 16 tie party. Tudo has not travelled yet. The Gunners have not made it past this state of the Champions League since 2010, but when they beat Porto, Party and Verita returns are good news for Michael Tata, although he will be safe to contend without Gabriel Jesus, Alexander Zernacho, Zinchenko, and Takiro Tomiyashu. These are the injuries for the Arsenal. So the Michael Tata have a good lineup against the Porto, and hopefully the Arsenal will win.